Hey everyone, welcome to Mad Backyard. Today we're gonna to show you how to clean your entire pit boss from top to bottom in four easy steps. This includes the grates, the flame broiler, the inside, and the outside of your pit boss. We'll also show you a fast and easy way to remove rust from any part of your pit boss without even needing to use any harsh chemicals. Finally, we'll share two bonus steps for those of you that wanna do an even deeper clean of your grill grates and your flame broiler. So make sure to stay tuned until the end for those. This video is actually part two of our pit boss cleaning series. In our first video, I showed you how to quickly clean your pit boss grates without using any wire bristles and without needing to do a high heat burn off. So if you haven't watched that video yet, make sure to check it out after this one. I'll put a link to it right up here and down in the description below. So let's go ahead and get started. Today we're gonna work top to bottom from the grates down. So step one is to clean the cooking grates themselves. First, you're gonna remove the cooking grates from the pit boss. They should be fairly clean if you've been keeping up with them by steam cleaning them in between cooks like we showed you how to do in our last video. But today we're gonna remove them from the pit boss and do a deeper clean with some soap and water. I find it's fastest to use a large storage bin such as this one. Fill it partially with some water and a mild dish soap. This will help keep everything contained while you're cleaning and avoid any grease stains getting on your deck or concrete. If they're really dirty, you can let them soak in the water for a little while first. Then give them a good scrub on each side with a kitchen sponge, rinse them off, and then lay them out to air dry. Step two is to clean the flame broiler. This metal gets pretty hot even at lower cooking temperatures, so most everything on here will be pretty well charred. For the flame broiler, I like to use a wooden grill scraper to scrape off all the charred pieces. I like how the edge of the wooden grill scraper can really get down in this bottom corner to get everything scraped out. I'll put a link to this scraper and everything else I'm using today down in the description below if you want to check them out for yourself. Give the flame broiler a really good scraping to get off all the pieces, then use a mini shop vac to clean all the scrape bits up. Keep repeating until you've scraped up most of the charred on bits off the flame broiler. I find moving the flame broiler to a dry empty storage bin also gives me a better angle to get all the last bits of gunk off with my wooden scraper. If you want, you can put the flame broiler in the same bin of water to soak for a little while, then hit it with the same wooden scraper once more pieces have loosened up. If you've got some rust on your flame broiler, you can remove it by saturating some paper towels in distilled white vinegar. Let them soak on your flame broiler for about 30 to 60 minutes. Remove the paper towels and rinse and wipe off the dissolved rust very well. You can repeat as necessary if you've still got more rust. Then rinse off the vinegar, dry the flame broiler very well, and spray both sides with some high heat cooking oil. Rub the cooking oil into the metal to evenly distribute it. This will keep the metal from oxidizing and rust reforming immediately again. Now that we've removed the flame broiler, we're gonna use the same mini shop vac to clean all the ash and dust out of the bottom of the pit boss barrel. You can use a little steel wool to brush off the flame broiler rod before vacuuming. If you have a quick release on the bottom of your pit boss, you can empty the ash pot from the bottom. Empty the ash, then give the inside of the ash pot a good wipe down with a dry paper towel to get any stuck on bits of pellet still remaining. You should really empty the ash pot after every cook, but you can wait to vacuum out the rest of the pit boss once every three to four cooks. We're gonna spray down the inside of the cooking chamber with this citrus degreaser. I like using this kind from Citrus Safe on the black enamel inside my pit boss because it's non-corrosive and non-toxic, but still cuts well through the grease. You can spray all over the inside, making sure to get all the ledges where a lot of the grease collects and let it sit for a few minutes. Then take a sponge or a moist shop towel and wipe down every surface really well, making sure to really get the ledges around the grease chute because this will likely be the dirtiest area on the inside of your pit boss. Don't worry about scrubbing the inside of your pit boss for hours and hours to try to make it look brand new. We just want to really focus on the big pieces of food that have fallen off, the little pools of grease that accumulate on the ledges and shelves. We want to leave some of the seasoning from prior cooks in place. This will actually prevent rust and prolong the life of our pit boss. Next, make sure to wipe down the temperature probe as this can accumulate grease over time and distort the temperature reading your pit boss controller is receiving. I like to wipe down the thermometer every three to four cooks, even if I'm not doing a full deep clean of my pit boss. Just pour some isopropyl alcohol on a paper towel and give the temperature probe a good rub down to get any grease that is built up off of it. Cleaning the temperature probe is one of the best ways to avoid having temperature control issues when cooking with your pit boss. However, we did make an entire video on how to fix two of the other most common temperature problems you'll run into on a pit boss. 
So make sure to check out that video if you're running into issues with temperature control. I'll put a link to it down in the description below. Next, rinse off the citrus degreaser with some wet shop towels and then dry everything off really well. If you have some rusty areas on your pit boss, now is a great time to take care of them. For instance, we had some rust buildup on the inside of our lid as well as the top of our exhaust chimney that we wanted to get rid of. You can use the paper towels soaked in vinegar again here wherever you have rust accumulating on your pit boss. We draped our saturated paper towels across the lid and let them soak on the metal for a couple hours to dry out the rust. For the chimney, because it only had a small amount of rust, we simply wiped down those areas with a vinegar soaked paper towel and that was enough to take it off. After the lid had soaked, we wiped off all the drawn out rust with another vinegar soaked paper towel. We then dried it off well and applied a thin layer of our high heat cooking oil to keep the metal from reoxidizing and rusting again. Lastly for this step, you want to apply a thin layer of cooking oil to the entire inside of your pit boss barrel to season everything back up and help prevent rusting. Avoid spraying directly on the temperature probe we just wiped down, but everything else is fair game. After spraying, use a dry shop towel to spread the cooking oil out evenly and rub it in and across all the surfaces, making sure to get in all the corners and the ledges. Now you can replace your flame broiler and your cooking grates. Make sure to give the tops and bottoms of these components a good spray and wipe down with the high heat cooking oil as well if you haven't already. Next you want to come over and clean your pit boss grease bucket. This is easy enough to clean in the kitchen sink with some soap and water on the inside. When you do clean it, I recommend using one of these foil liners. It makes cleanup a lot easier next time. They fit right inside the bucket and you can put it right back in place and you'll have an easy cleanup next time you clean your pit boss. For step four, we're gonna clean the outside of our pit boss. I recommend cleaning it with a simple bucket of soap and water. Use a mild dish soap and a gentle sponge that won't scratch the outside of your pit boss. Make sure to remove the metal tray under the front shelf before cleaning to get all the crumbs and gunk out of those crevices. Wring out the sponge well so you don't have soapy water dripping everywhere and give the entire outside of your pit boss a good cleaning. Then gently spray down the pit boss to rinse off the soap. Be careful not to get water on the inside of the cooking chamber or the hopper. Also, be careful not to spray upwards directly into the controller box where all the electronics are located. Finally, dry the pit boss off thoroughly with some lint-free rags or shop towels to prevent water spots from forming. After following these four steps, you should have your entire pit boss cleaned from top to bottom. Now you'll notice we used no heavy duty chemicals while cleaning our pit boss. Even when we took off all that rust, it was only with distilled white vinegar. Now, if you wanna get a deeper clean on your grill grates and your flame broiler, you may find that you need to use some stronger chemicals in order to get them cleaner. There is some debate in the barbecue world about whether you should ever use strong chemicals like oven cleaner inside your smoker. Some people argue that this can lead to off-putting flavors inside the smoker and even ruin your food. In the process of making this video, we ran a poll on YouTube and found that 70% of you guys never use any heavy duty chemicals inside your grills or smokers, and the other 30% use them either occasionally or frequently. I use various chemicals to occasionally deep clean my smokers, and I've always found that as long as I did a long, higher heat burn off afterwards, which I'll talk you through at the end of this video, I've never had any issues. So all that being said, we wanted to keep the first part of this video mostly natural to show you how to clean the pit boss that way. And these second two bonus steps will show you how to use some uh, more heavy duty chemicals to help get a deeper clean on your grill grates and your flame broiler. So let's get started. Bonus step one is a way to get every last piece of burnt food off your cooking grates. And we did it by putting them in a large garbage bag with some ammonia overnight. Make sure to wear good chemical resistant gloves when using chemicals like ammonia. We used three extra large heavy duty trash bags to triple bag the grates, poured two cups of ammonia into the bag and tied it up tightly. Tying the bags tightly is very important because it's actually the fumes from the ammonia that clean the grates. So you need to keep them locked in. The next morning, be careful when opening the bag so you don't breathe in the fumes or splash ammonia on yourself. You can pour a little vinegar in the bag and this will help neutralize the ammonia and the fumes to make the grates a little easier to work with. Give them a good scrubbing with a sponge or towel to get off all the pieces of burnt food. 
They should be pretty loose and easy to knock off at this point. Ammonia is water soluble, so we rinsed the grates really well when we were done and even scrubbed them with soap and water one more time to really get any remaining residue off. Bonus step two is a way to really get more of those burnt on carbonized layers off your flame broiler. Once you've scraped down the flame broiler, washed it with soap and water and given it a good rinse, lay it down on some flattened cardboard boxes or newspaper. Get a can of oven cleaner like this one from Easy Off that's designed to use on grills as well as ovens. I know some people use oven cleaner on their cooking grates as well, but because it's so strong, I only use it on the steel flame broiler in my pit boss, not on any direct cooking surfaces. And I definitely never use oven cleaner on the black enamel on the inside or the outside of my pit boss as it could be corrosive and cause staining. Generously spray the foam on the top of the flame broiler. Make sure to wear a good pair of chemical resistant gloves when handling chemicals like oven cleaner. Let the oven cleaner soak on the flame broiler for about 40 minutes to an hour, or whatever the directions on your particular bottle say. The oven cleaner will eat away at the leftover carbonized drippings we weren't able to remove with our wooden scraper or with the soap and water. After 40 to 60 minutes, use a plastic paint scraper and a sponge to loosen up the pieces the oven cleaner has been working on. Then rinse off the oven cleaner very well. You can repeat as needed with another round and continue scrubbing and scraping off the cooked on layers from the flame broiler. We did two rounds of oven cleaner and we're happy enough with the results. We could have possibly done four or five to make it look even better or even tried soaking it overnight in a garbage bag, but we wanted to get on with cleaning the rest of our grill but you can spend as much time on your flame broiler as you like. We then dried the flame broiler well and quickly sprayed it with the high heat cooking oil to season it and keep the metal from oxidizing and re-rusting. Once all the components are back in place and you're finished cleaning the pit boss, run it through a burn off at 450 degrees for about one to two hours to burn off any remaining residues from the degreaser and other chemicals we use to clean it. Open up your exhaust chimney all the way to maximize the airflow and let all those chemical fumes out. This burn off will also help bake on all the oil we applied to re-season the pit boss and keep it well protected. We made a video on how to start and season a brand new pit boss you can check out for a full step-by-step -step instructions on how to run your pit boss through the burn off and season it. The video shows you how to season the pit boss when the grill is brand new, but the same principles apply after you do a deep cleaning as well. So always make sure to do a burn off and re-season your pit boss after any deep cleaning, especially if you used heavy duty chemicals. We also made a video showing you how to empty all the pellets from the hopper and auger on your pit boss. I recommend doing this after the burn off if you're putting the grill away for the season or just don't plan on cooking for a few weeks. We hope this video was helpful. I'll put links to all the products we used today as well as the other videos I mentioned down in the description below if you wanna check them out. And if you have any helpful techniques or products you like to use when cleaning your pit boss, let us know down in the comments section as well. And don't forget to hit the like button and we'd love if you consider subscribing to our channel. Make sure to also check out madbackyard.com for more pit boss resources, recipes, and helpful guides. Thanks for watching. Thank you.